Hadrosaurs were first unearthed in North America during the 1850 years, with Hadrosaurus being one of the most complete dinosaur specimens discovered at the time. It also became the first dinosaur skeleton to be mounted for public display. In early reconstructions, hadrosaurs were depicted as bipedal animals in a kangaroo-like stance. Their broad, flat, duckbill snouts led paleontologists to believe they were semi-aquatic, and they were often illustrated wading or swimming while feeding on aquatic plants. Although crested hadrosaurs like Parasaurolophus have become iconic members of the group, Edmontosaurus annectans has seen the most significant changes in scientific understanding. Edmontosaurus has had a complicated taxonomic history, with various specimens named under different genera, such as Anatosaurus and Trachodon for much of the 20th century. To simplify, I'll refer to it as Edmontosaurus, though the naming wasn't fully clarified until the 90s. The first Edmontosaurus specimen was discovered in the 1890 years, and Edmontosaurus regulus followed in the 1910 years. For much of the 20th century, it was reconstructed in a tripod-like posture, believed to be highly aquatic. A well-preserved, mummified specimen reinforced this idea, as skin impressions around its hands were interpreted as webbing for swimming. This mummy also revealed delicate skin covered in small scales, with clusters of larger scales, and a possible skin frill running down its neck and back. By the mid-60s, during the dinosaur renaissance, the view of hadrosaurs as aquatic animals was overturned. Evidence from their anatomy, stomach contents, and fossil environments indicated they were fully terrestrial herbivores. They likely walked on four legs but ran on two, with discoveries of nesting colonies in the 70s revealing their social behaviors and parental care. From the 90s onward, new mummy specimens of Edmontosaurus and other hadrosaurs provided further insight into their soft tissue anatomy. Their necks and tails were more muscular than skeletal remains suggested, and the frill along their back might have been segmented. The webbing on their hands turned out to be more of a fleshy mitten that helped bear weight, and instead of the broad duckbill, they had large, hooked beaks, giving them a more horse-like appearance. Edmontosaurus lived at the very end of the Cretaceous, around 73 to 66 million years ago, with Edmontosaurus regulus found in Western Canada and Edmontosaurus annectans in Western Canada and the Western US. It was one of the largest hadrosaurs, typically growing 9 to 12 meters long, though some partial remains hint at super adults reaching up to 15 meters. As a grazer, Edmontosaurus likely fed on tough, low-growing plants like horsetails, using its beak to clip vegetation and then grinding it with hundreds of teeth in the back of its jaws, utilizing a unique chewing motion. Its skin had a varied texture, with different scale shapes and sizes across its body. A mummified Edmontosaurus regulus specimen displayed raised scale clusters on its neck and a fleshy crest on its head. It's unclear whether these were sexually dimorphic traits or if Edmontosaurus annectans had similar features, but they are often speculatively included in reconstructions. Despite being one of the best-known non-avian dinosaurs, Edmontosaurus continues to reveal surprises. Ongoing research on a specimen known as Dakota led to a 2019 tease by the North Dakota Geological Survey of a discovery, a large, hoof-like nail on the front of its hand. This suggests Edmontosaurus might have been more adapted for quadrupedal movement than previously thought, although official findings on this are yet to be published.